and it's straight over to you. Live. Live. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to begin the meeting now. You're going to have to uh, just imagine that I've got a gavel that I'm knocking down. Um, we'll move straight on. Item one on the agenda. Um, um, Chairman, sorry to interrupt. Paul Bateman here. Yeah. Could I take a roll call, please? I know that all the members are here, but for the public's benefit who don't see as much as us, could I just, just call out members' names and if they say present? You certainly can. I was going to do it during the apologies, but that's fine. Yep. If you, if you, uh, right. I was, I, I was going to suggest that uh, if you read out each councillor's name and they just say hello, just to check the microphones are working. Okay. Uh, Councillor Arlett. Hello, present. Thank you, Councillor Bretherton. Oh, present. Councillor Dragonetti. Uh, present. Councillor Gregory. Present. Councillor Hillier. Present. Councillor Cantor. Uh, present. Thank you. Councillor Levy. Present. Councillor Rob. Present. Councillor Ian White. Present. Councillor Wilson. I saw her there, so she's present. And um, the uh, chairman, Councillor Snowden, is present. And I did see one of the local members on the first application. Uh, Maggie Philipova Rivers is also present. Present. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. OK. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, so we'll now move on. Uh, I have a, like, a statement to read. Welcome everyone to this afternoon's first virtual meeting of South Oxford District Council Planning Committee. This is a meeting of elected district councillors appointed by the council to, to determine planning applications. This is a meeting of in public, not a public meeting. Due to the current situation, we are holding these meetings virtually in accordance with the Coronavirus Emergency Act 2020 and in line with recent changes made to the Council's constitution. As the meetings are now taking place virtually, there are of course some changes to the way these will be conducted. I will briefly outline the format of these meetings. Firstly, we will start with the consideration of each planning application by hearing the planning officer's report. The ward councillor will then be invited to speak. They have up to five minutes to address the committee. After the ward councillor has finished speaking, members of the planning committee can ask the ward councillor for points of clarification on the application. Any statements sent in by the town or parish councils, applicants, objectors or supporters will have all been sent to members of the committee two days before this meeting. They have also been published on the council's website. After points of clarification have been answered by the officer, I will ask for a motion. Please indicate this by requesting to speak. After putting your motion, along with acceptable planning, material planning reasons, if you disagree with the officer's recommendation, I will then ask for a seconder. Please indicate this again by requesting to speak. Following this, I will open the debate and ask each councillor in turn alphabetically whether you wish to comment. If you wish to come back further during the debate, please indicate this by requesting to speak in the meeting chat. Once the debate has ended and summed up by the motion holder, Paul will ask you in turn, each in turn, alphabetically for your vote on the application. Please confirm whether you have heard all the discussion and state if you are in support of the motion, against the motion, abstaining or absent, as you did not hear the whole of the discussion. If during the meeting you lose connection, please advise me as soon as you can using the meeting chat function. In such a case, you may be considered absent and unable to vote on that item. Do all members understand this or have any questions you wish to ask? Understood. Yep, OK, fantastic. Then we'll move on with the agenda then. Uh, item two, apologies for absence. Uh, no apologies, Chairman, no, all members present. Fantastic. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to introduce Paula Fox, um, who is the Plan Development Manager and Paul Bateman, who you've just heard from, who is from our legal and democratic team, who will be helping along with other officers to run this meeting. Item three on the agenda, minutes of the previous meeting. This was held on Wednesday, the 26th of February, 2020, which seems a lifetime ago, obviously. These minutes have been available to members. So can I ask if you are happy for me as chair to sign these as a true record? Yes. 
Again, I don't I don't think we need everyone, but anybody disagree with this? No, then I can sign those. Uh, moving on, item four. Do any members have any declarations of disposable pecuniary interest in respect to the items on the agenda for this, this meeting? Again, none. Item six. Do we have any proposals for site visits from members? No, nope. we didn't direct. Uh, item seven, public participation. There is none currently, but, uh, well, sorry. but members yes. of the public have been had the ability to submit written responses, which are all available on the council website. Uh, Chairman, it's Paul Bateman here. Could yeah. I just just sure. add to that to say that um, statements made by the public have been published on the website, as you mentioned, and um, the ones uh, for this meeting were also sent to the, the committee on Tuesday, the 26th of May, and they were from um, members of the public, uh, Kate Barrett, a Roger Guyver and South Stoke Parish Council. As it happens, they're all in respect of the first application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, the applications. Item eight, the old vicarage, the street, South Stoke. Can I ask Kim Gould, the planning officer for this application, to give her as her report, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Kim Gould, the case officer speaking. This site is located to the rear of the old vicarage in South Stoke, which is a grade two listed building which lies within the Chilterns AOMB. The application seeks full planning permission for a five year period to use a former dairy building as a dog daycare facility. This offers dog owners a bespoke service whereby their dog would be looked after and exercised whilst they are at work. This is an extension to the dog walking service, which Walkies LLP have operated since 2008. Part of the building would be used to store vintage cars. An outside area to the rear of the building has been fenced off to enable the dogs to exercise. The old dairy sits amongst a collection of some 18 other small buildings currently used as workshops, which were permitted under a permission granted in 1987. The key considerations in assessing this proposal are whether the principle is acceptable, noise, hours of operation and traffic. The proposal seeks to expand an existing business. The NPPF advises that planning policies and conditions should enable the sustainable growth and expansion of all types of business in rural areas and that local planning authorities should help create conditions in which businesses can invest, expand and adapt. The framework also advises that sites which are well related to the existing settlement should be encouraged where opportunities exist. And the core strategy se seeks to support the economy of rural areas through the reuse of rural buildings. As such, the principle of this use operating from an existing rural building within a settlement is acceptable. Noise and traffic are the principal concerns of the parish council and local residents who have objected to this proposal. Noise and disturbance is a material planning consideration and in this case I have sought a specialist's opinion. Given the concern expressed by the local people, I have discussed this issue at length with the Environmental Protection Officer. He has examined the application details and confirmed that he has no objection to this proposal on noise grounds. Taking this advice into account, the type of setup being proposed and its daytime operation, your officers consider that there are no technical reasons to refuse this planning application. He has also advised me that in order to grant a license for this use, which the applicant would have to obtain prior to operating the daycare service, the number of dogs which could be kept in this building at any one time would not exceed six. This is worked out on the floor area of the building and he has advised me that the figure is likely to be lower than six because space taken up by toys, bedding, etc. has to be deducted from the floor area. Whilst there is potential for noise, he is of the opinion that it is controllable through the detailed requirements of the licence. Nuisance provisions are also available under the Environmental Protection Act of 1990. 
There are concerns that this proposed facility will give rise to unacceptable levels of vehicular movements. The applicant has confirmed that it is in her intention to collect the dogs and to deliver them back to their homes in the afternoon. And any client would have to complete a form agreeing to this arrangement. A planning condition is recommended to ensure that this is done. The Highway Authority initially raised concerns that this proposal on the grounds that it would have an adverse impact upon highway safety through the increased use of an access with restricted visibility. Further information has since been submitted and the principal engineer has been out to the site. He has confirmed that the access provides sufficient visibility without harm to highway safety. He considers that any increased traffic generation would be negligible in terms of waiting at the access. He has concluded that he does not foresee any perceivable impact and stresses that to justify a reason, a refusal of planning permission on highway grounds, the impact must be demonstrated to be severe. No objections being raised on highway grounds. Finally, hours of operation have also been raised as a concern. Currently, the workshops which surround this site can operate from 7am to 6pm Mondays to Fridays and from 7am to 1pm on Saturdays. This was a condition of the 1987 Planning Commission. A condition is recommended for this proposal which would restrict the hours of opening from 8am to 6pm Monday to Friday and at no time at the weekend or on public holidays. This is considered reasonable and would not result in dogs being at the centre when the workshops are closed. The council's drainage engineer has raised no objection to this proposal subject to a standard condition. So in conclusion, this proposal is acceptable in terms of government advice and planning policies. There are no technical reasons to refuse the application and it's therefore recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Um, we now, I believe, award councillor, councillor Philip over Rivers. Do you wish to speak? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Yes, you'll get you'll get five minutes from when you begin speaking, and obviously, uh, just hang around for some questions afterwards, possibly. Okay, begin when you're ready. Um, it, it really. I than this. I, I just wanted to say that I, I appreciate this isn't a straightforward application, which is why it is before the committee today. I personally have a lot of sympathy with concerns regarding noise and increased traffic, but I am somewhat um, encouraged to see that this would be controllable through a license and that also there are no objections on um, highway grounds. I also have a lot of sympathy with residents aspiring to run small businesses more local businesses, uh, those do form an important part of our local economy. And as such, I have every confidence um, um, to, to kind of place this uh, application in the capable hands of, of the planning committee to pave the way forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, do any members have any questions of clarification? Don't see any. OK, thank you very much. Oh, there is one, Chairman. Oh, yes, Councillor Arla. Celia. Oh, Councillor Wilson. Oh, wait, I can't see that. Councillor Wilson. He's muted. Chairman, could I just check, is this questions for the ward councillor or yes. questions of clarification for the officer? No, the, the, sorry, questions for the ward councillor. Sorry, we're moving on to points of clarification with the officer in a minute. OK, thank you. Councillor Wilson. No. She's muted. Um, I keep unmuting it. You are, you're, I can hear you now, Councillor Wilson. Go ahead. It says my microphone is muted now. No, we can hear you. OK. Um, it's a, it may be a question for the officers. If you prefer me to raise it under that, it's about the about the um, the fact that the, there seems to be no discussion at all of the second part of the application, except to say that it's not objected to. OK. Uh, Councillor Philip over Rivers, do you wish to comment? Um, no, not at all. I think it's definitely for officers. OK. Okay. 
Thank you very much, then. That's fine. Um, we'll now move on to uh, points of clarification from for the officer. Councillor Wilson, do you wish to repeat your question? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, I, I'm puzzled by that, that there seems to be no comment about the second part of the application. Uh, at the same time, there is some concern about possibly expanding the business later. So I'm wondering where that comes in, because the Parish Council have not objected to that part. Uh, Kim Gould speaking, the case officer. Um, I think you're referring to um, the uh, storage of vintage cars, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, but that's that's the, the building is obviously separated into two distinct um, points, parts. The storage area is proposed for the storage of vintage cars. I think a concern has been raised by local people that, that the proposed use, if approved, could of the dog safe care facility could um, encroach into that storage area. Um, that is a separate use. It, it falls into a different use class and it would require a full planning permission in order to do that. Does, does that answer your question? Thank you very much. Yes, that's okay. helpful. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Levy was next. Am I? Can you hear me? We can now, yes. I'm getting confused between the Unmute button. Uh, you've got it muted again. That's it. You're live now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, a, a question about the um, uh, was it the perch and pike or whatever it is, where um, I think that um, it was advertised that um, the dogs could be taken there at other hours. So um, uh, not between um, eight and six. And um, is it the pike and perch or perch and something like that, whatever that is. Um, so there's that question also about um, general noise. So I actually, yeah, could you explain about that? Uh, Kim Gould, case officer speaking. Um, in relation, I think the councillor Levy is referring to information that's on the, the website. Um, the applicant has been a, a little bit ahead of herself in launching this website. Um, she realises this now, um, but didn't want to remove the website as she felt this would suggest she had something to hide and she vehemently believes she doesn't. Um, she is very aware that if planning permission is granted, subject to the recommended conditions that she would amend the information on the website to accord with any permission granted. Um, so let me, hopefully that answers your question. Hmm. OK, thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, we now move on to Councillor Gregory and then Rob and Cantor. Hi, Councillor Gregory here. Um, you may have actually just answered my question. Um, Look, looking at the website, it looks like the daycare is in operation. Is is that um, is that not the case, um, or is it is it just a marketing opportunity before it launches? Uh, Kim Gould speaking again. Um, you, you're correct. It's it's there's no daycare facility at the site at all. Most of the website details that I've seen are aspirational ones and I think as I've said that she did get a little bit ahead of herself um, she's very passionate about her dogs um, but she realizes now that perhaps she shouldn't have done that and that she would accord to any planning conditions um, or restrictions that are reasonable that we that they were imposed on her and the business thanks okay councillor Rob Sorry, mute, unmute, mute, unmute. Um, I have a query and I raised this with the officer earlier, but I wanted to raise it publicly and I'm still not um, entirely satisfied. Um, the highways officer um, expressed some concerns around um, access to the property, queuing, etc., and then found that those concerns had been addressed after having visited the site. 
um, and said that um, they were comforted by the knowledge that um, there'd be no pick up and drop off from the site. Um, and then they specifically request a planning condition um, to this effect. There is no planning condition to that effect. There is a planning condition which says that the um, the applicant must adhere to an agreement um, which is addended to our documents. When you look at that agreement, it says additional clause, owner agrees not to, under any circumstances, this is the owner of the dog, deliver or collect their dogs from the old vicarage in South Stoke. Now, that doesn't satisfy, in my opinion, the, the issue around highways and traffic, does it? Because we're still talking about volumes of traffic potentially coming into South Stoke to another location, possibly the pub over the road. Could we have an express condition in the planning approval should we go down that road as per the highway officer's request as well? I think they... Um, so Kim Gould speaking. Um, I don't know if it would help members, but I did have a, a brief conversation with the um, highway officer in, in question today, anticipating a question similar to the one that's just been asked. And I want I asked him to clarify if his recommendation of no objection relied on the um, club, the clients entering into that agreement that, that we've referred to. And he has, if I just read out what he said to me, he said, in my opinion, the condition formalises the operation of the business as set out in the submission. However, my appraisal was made assuming this wouldn't be conditioned and considering different users might take on the site with different methods. Therefore, I didn't consider the condition essential from a highway point of view. So no condition required from a highway's point of view um, nonetheless, in the agreement, would it be advisable to amend the, the wording in this agreement to make it clear that customers, you know, in order that the applicant can't circumvent the intention behind this, if you see what I mean? Kim Gould speaking. Um, I don't think we could amend the condition because the area that the, that the Council Rob is referring to lies outside the red site area. That the pub that you've referred to is, is, lies outside the red site area, so we couldn't condition something that lies outside that red site area. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cantor, next. Councillor Cantor. Microphone, please. Can you hear me now? We can, yes. Yeah. Uh, just a clarification for all the, uh, from the officer about all the question about uh, opening hours. Can you clarify that this is a licensing issue and not a planning one? Kim Gold speaking. Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Are you, are you referring to the opening hours being part of the license? Did you? Yes. That question. Uh, yes, it is uh, like a licensing matter and not a planning matter. Um, in terms of the opening times of the business, we we as the local planning authority can impose opening hours in the same way that we did for the the workshops on the site. Um, in terms of the license, there's a whole host of criteria that they have to adhere to. Um, I, If, for example, they wanted to open all night, I'm sure that wouldn't be something that they would be approved by the license. But if we what we're approving, if we approve this application would be the, con the planning condition that's recommended. Yeah. So all the opening uh, opening hours will be subject to whatever happens during uh, licensing committees or what whatever license they will get.
Hello? I'm sorry, I was on mute. I do apologise. Oh. Kim Gould speaking. The, um, the, the hours, if, if this planning application was um, approved this afternoon, those hours are deemed to be reasonable and I don't envisage that they would be um, altered by the license. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Levy's next. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Ah. Oh. I'm just, just a bit confused about trying to uh, mute and unmute myself. <laughs> do, do, do you actually do that? Really? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I'd like to say that um, I, I've got a suggestion that um, now, um, this is this is their suggestion as well that um, the um, the dog um, business has a has a license for only it's a trial period because of potential noise to see how it works uh whereas i don't have any objection to the vintage car uh for five years so is that possible to uh, suggest that so you have one for five years and, and one for one year as a trial period uh kim gould speaking um i think one year would be very unreasonable for somebody that's investing time and money into a, to try and create a business. Um, I, I feel confident that the restrictions that are in place by the license that I've had sight of, plus the conversation that I've had with environmental protection officer at great length, um, because I am very sensitive to the fact that mem um, local members and people are concerned about noise. I feel that um, there wouldn't be a need or a to restrict it to um, less than the, the period of time recommended. I think if members did want to reduce it slightly, then perhaps three years may be more reasonable, but I think one year would be very unreasonable given that we haven't got any technical reasons to um, to do that, to reduce that, the hours. And I, think, the I think the practicalities of actually um, the owners um, depositing their dogs and picking them up and how that's going to work um, uh, would I prefer if that was a shorter period because otherwise it couldn't if it doesn't work out properly um, it could be very annoying for the, for the neighbours. Levy this is questions remember. Oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you have any more questions for the, for the officer? Um, no. No. No okay can, can I look to uh, look to the members for a motion at all. I'd like to put a motion that it's accepted with the what I just suggested. With the condition. Yeah, with those two conditions, one for five years and one for one year for the dogs. OK, uh, do we have a seconder for that motion? No. In that case, do I have a different motion? Uh, where am I? God. Uh, Chairman? Yes, Councillor Arlett. I propose officer's recommendation, Chairman. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for Councillor Arlett's motion? Uh, yes, the Councillor Dragonetti, I, I second uh, Councillor Arlett's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Dragonetti. Do you wish to speak now or reserve your right? Um, no, uh, I think it's, uh, as I've read the application, it's for six dogs, and I don't think that's uh, um, going to be uh, a burden. Uh, to anyone, so that's why I'm supporting the the, uh, the uh, recommendation and Councillor Hollett's motion. Thank you. Um, we now move on um, to debate, uh, and as stated, uh, I'm going to ask Paul Bateman to go around alphabetically, asking for you if you wish to make a comment. Uh, Paul, could you do that, please? Or I can. Right, I am. Sorry, Chairman, oh. I was looking at something else. My microphone was um, muted. So, begin with Councillor Arlott. Do you have any comments? No, I will sum up, uh, Chairman. Yeah. I will yeah. sum up afterwards. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bretherton. Uh, no comments to make. I will be supporting the application. Thank you. Councillor Dragonetti. No comments. I support the application. Thank you. Uh, Councillor 
Gregory? Uh, yeah, no comment. I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. Councillor Lorraine Hillier? No comment, but I'm supportive. Thank you. Councillor Alexandrina Cantor? Alexandrine Cantor? Any comments? Muted. Need to unmute, please. Do you have any comments? And sorry, sorry, it's quite slow. Uh, no comment. I support the application. Thank you, Councillor George Levy. No comment. Thank you, uh, Councillor Joe Rob. Uh, no comment, except to say I appreciate and recognise the efforts that have been made to ease some of the concerns of the parish council and residents. So I'll be supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor Ian White. Uh, I was concerned about the, the noise issue, uh, so I did have a discussion with the officer um, earlier today about the process and what would be done if there were to be a problem there. And um, I'm quite happy following that discussion that we do have the correct me uh, mechanisms to deal with this. Uh, and so I will be happy to support this motion. Councillor Celia Wilson. Councillor Wilson. I'm coming. <laughs> Just speak. I can't you unmute my phone. You are. We can hear you, Councillor Wilson. Can you? Oh, good. OK. <sighs> Missed you there, I'm afraid. Can you mute yourself? <laughs> no. <clears throat> Councillor Wilson. I have to try and come back to it. Um, Paula, if, if, um, as chairman, um, I'd like to say I'll be supporting the motion, although I did wonder whether it should be three years. I think one year is quite right, as, as the officer said, it's too short a period, but most of the concerns around this application um, seem to be fearing what's going to happen in the future. Um, and I did wonder whether three years was enough to show both sides that the, the worries were um, didn't have any uh, substance to them, but short enough that if it is as bad as they fear, that uh, we could we could do something about it. But um, I don't have any problem with the application. Um, it was just the length of the time I was considering, but I will support the motion as it seems uh, most people will. Councillor Wilson, do we have you back? Yes, I think you have. I, I was uh, what, concerned about somewhat similar things and I can't see why we can't make sure that the planning application as it's specified has to be uh, adhered to during that time and that would remove the need to make it a, a short term thing. OK. Right. Do it, does anybody else want to come back on any other points in the debate? Then no. We'll, in that case, we'll move to uh, Councillor Arlett to sum up, please. Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, I've heard a couple of comments there, but if you read all of the report, uh, if there are anybody objectors to the noise, they can just uh, object to SODC on that. I think the officers covered all the all the conditions that's needed. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the officer on the answers that she's have to give this evening. I think we made a bit of a meal of this actually. Um, so yeah, I'd so move that we accept the uh, officer's recommendation. Okay, excellent. Uh, we'll now move to the uh, vote. Paul, can I ask you to go round? Councillors asking for their position, please. Thank you, Chairman. And this is with with your with the amendment about um, going for the three years as well. No, 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 no. Uh, five years. Still sticking with the five years, right? Yeah. OK, so um, starting with Councillor Arla, could I have your vote, please? In favour. Thank you. Councillor Bretherton. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Dragonetti. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Kate, Kate Gregory. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Lorraine Hillier. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Alexandrine Cantor.
Hello. Uh, microphone, please. Well, I'll come back to Councillor Cantor. Councillor Levy. Uh, against. Thank you. Councillor Rob, Joe Rob. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Ian White. For approve. Thank you. Councillor Celia Wilson. OK, we'll come back. And Chairman. Yep, in support. Thank you. So could I go back now to Councillor, um, or two councillors, Councillor Alexandrine Cantor, we didn't hear you. Your microphone. Councillor Cantor, we can see you, but we can't hear you. I think her screen might be frozen. Oh, right. Paul Bateman, it's Paula Fox here. I wondered whether Councillor Cantor could use the meeting chat to confirm her um, position on the application. Is that an alternative? Yeah, that's, a, that's an indication. Could you do that, please? Councillor Wilson. Yeah, Councillor Wilson, we need to go back to as well. Would you be able to do that, Councillor Cantor? Yeah, there we go. Thumbs up. Thank you very much. Excellent. And finally, Councillor Celia Wilson, please. Councillor Wilson. Gone AWOL. Yes, I don't see her on the screen. I think we have sufficient chairman. Yeah, yeah, I think I think we're going to have to move on. Uh, can you give us the vote as we as it stands, please? As it stands, it is um, three, six, ten in favour and at present one absent. No, well, no, you haven't got uh, Councillor Wilson's vote, have you? Oh, that's right. I've got I've got everybody except Councillor Wilson. So it's nine and one, is it? Yeah. Well, the 11 members of the committee. Yeah, and Councillor Wilson hasn't voted. Yeah. She objected. Councillor Levy was against. I was against. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, so, it, it's pretty clear that, that it's, uh, it's been approved anyway. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll now move on. Can you can you tell is is Councillor Wilson? She's still listening. She still she can still take still take part in the next application because you can hear the information. OK, so we move on to item nine, which is 105 Henley Road, Samford on Thames. And again, the planning officer for this application is Kim Gould. So Kim, would you Kim. kind of give us your report, please? Thank you. Yes, Kim Gould speaking. Um, this application is part of the side and rear garden of 105 Henley Road, which is the last dwelling to, on the north side of the road towards the southern end of the village. The site lies within the Oxford Green Belt. The application seeks full planning permission to erect two one bedroom flats as an extension to the existing semi detached property. The key considerations in assessing this application are whether the principle of residential development is acceptable, the siting scale and design, impact on the openness of the Green Belt, neighbour amenity and garden sizes. In terms of principle, the planning history of this site is pertinent. Planning permission was refused in 2018 for a detached three bedroom dwelling on the site. Planning permission was granted in 2019 for a two storey side extension, which remains extant. In housing policy and greenbelt terms, infill development is acceptable in villages such as Sanford on Thames. As this site is at the end of a linear ribbon of houses, it does not comprise a small gap in an otherwise built up frontage and is not closely surrounded by buildings. For this reason, it does not meet the definition of infill and conflicts with policy CSR1 of the core strategy and advice within the NPPF on development in the Greenbelt. 
The Parish Council have objected to the proposal as they consider it to be inappropriate development in the Greenbelt. The MPPF advises that inappropriate development in the Greenbelt should be resisted unless there are very special circumstances which outweigh the harm to the openness of the Greenbelt. In this case, the extant planning permission for a two storey side extension is a material planning consideration in the assessment of this proposal. As shown within the report, the extension would not be materially different to this extant permission in terms of footprint and appearance. It's my opinion that there would not be any additional harm to the openness or visual immunity of the Greenbelt from this development. And for this reason, officers consider that the extant planning commission represents very special circumstances and that the principle of development is acceptable in this case. <laughs> the impact on neighbours would not be materially greater than the extant scheme and no objection from neighbours has been received. The proposal accords to council standards in terms of garden sizes and off street parking. There is no objection from highways in relation to parking access or turning. The Parish Council also considered that the proposal would result in the front of the property being dominated by the parked car. The front of the property is already used for parking and so there would not be any material difference in the visual impact on the proposal. Finally, the Parish Council referred to the way the applicant has sought permission for a two-storey side extension and is now proposing two one-bedroom flats after the application for detached property was refused in 2018. Each application has to be considered on its own individual planning merits and the applicant is proceeding in a legitimate way. For these reasons and those set out in the report, this application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on. Uh, the Ward Councillor, do we have the Ward Councillor present? Uh, no Ward Councillor. Uh, she was invited, uh, Chair, but um, has decided not to attend. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, then we'll move we'll move on to uh, questions of the officer. Do any members have any questions? Uh, Councillor Gregory. Microphone, please. Apologies, I didn't mute. Um, I, it's Kate Gregory, Councillor Gregory here. Um, I just wanted to get um, clarification on um, the um, in the report. It said that this um, each application must be considered on its own individual planning merits. However. The fact that there's a um, extant planning permission for an extension is massively taken into consideration. In fact, it seems to be the biggest waiting on approving this application. I just wanted to um, yeah, get, get an understanding on that, really. Um, there seems to be a contradiction in the report. Um, Kim Gold speaking. Um, the application for a detached dwelling um, was refused because it was considered to be harmful to the openness of the green belt being detached from the, the main building. In the consideration of this application, we are obliged to take into consideration the planning history, particularly what is extant. They can build a, a two storey side extension which would mirror what's on the neighbouring property in this photograph tomorrow. So that has to be a, a fallback position which we have to take into account when considering this current application. I hope that's helpful. Um, yeah, thank, uh, thank you. So, so the fact that it, can, you, can I just get clarification, the fact that because there has been a two phased application process, that original application, not the original one, but the one that's already in place has had an impact on approving this. Kim Gould speaking. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, we're now 
Uh, Councillor Levy and then Councillor Wilson. Uh, yeah, um, I, I've got a sort of a question, um, almost a statement, but a question. Um, there's a picture in the um, of the um, of the property in which you. This is about the concern of the car, of the parked cars. Um, and I can see two parked cars outside the property. Um, I believe that um, the idea would be there's a design there for having um, plans for having six parked cars, um, which um, would greatly, uh, in, in your, do you agree that that would greatly change the view having six car parked cars there? Uh, my other question is, um, you mentioned you approve the planning permission uh, as long as there's parking and manoeuvring area is retained. So does that just mean that um, uh, you just keep the front as it is? Um, Kim, Kim Gould speaking. Um, the, there is potentially likely to be more cars than there are at present, but given that there is planning permission to extend this house with a two storey side extension, you could realistically have a family that quite easily has four, maybe five cars, depending on the age of teenage children, etc. So I don't think materially there would be any different between that situation and what we've got here. And um, in terms of the second question, um, yes, the condition would require the front garden effectively to be available for the parking. There's no requirement for them actually to be um, marked out at all on, on the surface of the, um, the, the driveway. But I mean, my point is, do you not agree if you had six cars parked in that area, it would actually um, be detrimental to the view of the, of the green belt, uh, as the parish council suggests. Kim Gould speaking. Uh, no, I don't agree with that statement. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um, I'd like to ask the, the Kim. Um, can you be? Can you tell me a little bit more clearly what, as a planning committee, our obligation is? to consider the needs of the green belts. I am not clear where the uh, green belts problem would become a planning problem and where it is not. Um, Kim Gould speaking. Um, the, 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 the consideration for members is to consider any additional harm to the openness of the green belt and the visual amenity of the green belt over and above what has been already approved. So you're looking at the, the mass the massing of the extension that's been approved compared to the, the scale and the massing of, of what is currently proposed. And in my opinion, there is neg negligible difference, if any, between the two. So that's between the previous application that hasn't been built and the current one, is that right? So I come back on that. Kimball speaking, yes, that is correct. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, any further questions? I don't see any. So in that case, I'm looking for a motion, please. Any councillors wish to move a motion? Uh, I'll uh, I propose a motion to uh, agree the officers recommendation. OK, that's Councillor Dragonetti. Uh, do we have a seconder for that, please? Oh, yes, second. I'll second. OK. I'll, I'll give way to Joe Rob. OK, <laughs> Councillor Rob, you have the floor. Do you wish to speak now or later? Um, I'll speak later. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much. So the motion is to approve officer's recommendation. We'll now move into debate. Uh, Paul, could you uh, do the honours, please? Sorry, yes, Chairman, I shall do that now. So I shall go through the list again. So. Uh, comments, please, if any, from uh, Councillor Ken Arlott. Yeah, just uh, briefly, Chairman, I think if we were looking at um, a new application to build on the side as two flats, we would probably go against it. I think the problem is it already has planning permission 
and there'll probably be nothing stopping them to build that and then maybe put a plan application in later to change it into two flats. Um, I think the car parking's sufficient. I don't see any reason uh, why we shouldn't support the, the car parking and you know I really can't find any reason to uh, to refuse this. Um, once again I'd like to thank the the officer for answering the questions. Thank you. Councillor Bretherton. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Got your microphone off. No, I couldn't get it unmuted. Sorry. Yeah, um, <laughs> Councillor Arnott said everything I was going to say, actually. Uh, apart from, I, I know none of us like this sort of creeping development and where they, you know, they put in one application and then you hear what the full intention is. But there's no reason for refusing this, so go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dragonetti. Uh, no, I have everything to say. Thank so you. Support the motion, obviously. Thank you very much. Councillor Kate Gregory. Hi, uh, yeah, um, I agree with Councillor Arlett and Councillor Bretherton. I'm not happy that um, this has been um, approached in a two phased application. Um, I think, as um, has <coughs> been previously said, that um, if this was a new application, it, it wouldn't be approved. So, um, yeah, but, you know, I will be supporting this motion. Thank you. Councillor Alexandrine Cantor, please. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, so I, I fully agree with uh, Councillor Gregory, uh, but I will uh, support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Lorraine Hillier. Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, the comments made by um, Councillor Arlott about given the extant planning commission, there's not a lot we can do and I share the unease. Thank you. Councillor George Levy. Um, I have no objection to the actual physical build of the property. My objection is to the parked cars and um, I'd be happier if there was actual screening because that will actually uh, be an eyesore in the, at the edge of the greenbelt. So um, I'm not really happy with it. OK, thank you. Councillor Joe Robb. Um, on that point, just raised by Councillor Levy, is it too late for us to put in a, um, a condition, a um, landscaping condition? Uh, you'd have to ask the, the proposer to uh, amend this motion. Provide, provided yeah. that's uh, OK with Paula Fox. Chairman, is it all right if I just come in with some advice at this point? Yes, I think it would be good to get the case officer's opinion as to what yeah. could realistically be achieved in the space available. Um, I'm not sure, um, for example, whether there would be space for additional landscaping there. Uh, one of the photographs that I think really helps uh, help me uh, in assessing the merits of this application is the one that shows the existing arrangement. Thank you for displaying that and, and that that one in particular. Have we got one that is just slightly further out of the site? I don't, I don't think we necessarily have, but um, could I ask Kim Gould just to comment on whether she thinks there's actually space to conduct any additional planting or indeed put up a screen, which may or may, oh, we can see it there. So just to the right hand side of that photograph, there is some hedging, albeit comparatively low level. Um, I don't think it would be reasonable to require anything additional myself, so um, I will not be recommending to the proposal of the motion to, to make an amendment. OK, I understand. Thank you, Paula. Um, just to give my uh, uh, comments, um, I agree with what everybody else has said. It's pretty clear that the previous application was a Trojan horse application. Um, and these are deeply frustrating for parish councils and for residents. Um, and I would say in future, beware the Trojan horse. Um, but on, there is no, sadly, no planning reason for us to refuse this, given the extant permission that's been granted. So for that reason, um, I'm going with the motion for rec uh, going with officer approval for recommendation. Thank you, Al. If I may, Chairman, continue with the comments from councillors. I would now ask Councillor Ian White, please. I'm very uncomfortable. No, well, more than that, I'm very unhappy with this application. It's quite clearly a cynical abuse of the um, system. Um, if you compare the house proposed in 2018 
with the extension proposed in 2019 and this latest application, the footprint difference is marginal. Um, I find it difficult to understand why the 2019 uh, permission was given, um, because if you look at the two, the, that case and compare it with 2018 and the refusal reasons, um, they they just do not make any sense. Um, but as members have quite rightly pointed out, this committee is hamstrung by the 2019 decision. Um, so I, I, I'm afraid I have no option whatsoever but to support what is, in my opinion, a very bad application. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next councillor, councillor Celia Wilson, please. Yeah, um, as was as has been said, I will uh, support the application, but what it seems to me to prove, which we should be thinking about in longer term, is that it actually isn't possible to consider only one application, as I think it was Ken Arlott said, uh, if, if we hadn't had the prior application, we wouldn't have turned this one, we would have turned this one down because of Greenbelt reasons. So I think that I would like the chair to take that on board and think about it for the future, please. Or all of us, maybe. Thank you. And just finally, uh, Chairman, any comments from from yourself? I, sh I share the uh, the members' feeling of impotence on how we can stop this. But again, we've got to, we've got to have uh, uh, material planning reasons to refuse it. So I will also be supporting the motion. Um, and we'll now go back to the proposer to sum up. But can I just get clarification, please, Councillor Dragonetti, that you, that this motion is only for officers recommendation no conditions that that, that is correct um and i think uh, i understand the point about this trojan horse and uh, the uh, the way that this uh, development has been uh, put together um actually when you look on the street view the adjoining other half of these the semi detached property has also been extended and as you can see the uh, the uh, resulting um the result of this development will actually make a, a balanced uh, uh, balanced thing. So I don't think it'll be quite as bad as we perceive. I talk about the car parking, of course, immediately behind is the A4074, which is sometimes just a stationary car park. Um, just as bad as an impact on the AONB. So uh, I will uh, con continue to uh, support the officer's recommendation. Okay. And I hope be glad to hear that most members do as well. Thank you very much, Councillor Dragonetti. Uh, then I'll ask Paul Bateman, please, to conduct the vote. Thank you, Chairman. So we'll start again. Uh, please could you indicate if you're in favour or against? So commencing with Councillor Arlott. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Bretherton. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Dragonetti. In favour. Councillor Kate Gre Gregory. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Lorraine Hillier. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Alexandrine Cantor. Hello. Come on. Alexandrine Cantor, please. Um, uh, in favour. Oh, in favour, thank you. Saw your thumbs up there. Um, Councillor George Levy. Uh, abstain. Dane, thank you. Uh, Councillor Joe Robb. In favour. Thank you. Councillor Ian White. Approve. Thank you. Councillor Celia Wilson. In favour. Thank you. And Chairman, if you're yep. voting. In favour. Thank you. So councillors, that, that is carried. That's um, uh, 10 votes um, in favour, one abstention. OK, that application is approved then. Uh, I'd also like to uh, say thank you to Kim Gould. It's not easy being the first officer to face the music on an online meeting like this. So uh, I think she's done very well. Uh, with that, it brings the, today's uh, short agenda to an end. And as chairman, I'd, I'd like to thank all the members for their patience today. And also in particular, all the officers who've worked so hard to help this meeting run as smoothly as possible. Um, and with that, I'll now officially close the meeting and thank you and have a good evening. Take care. Thank you all councillors.
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.